Yay Networks. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome back. <laughs> What's that song from? Huh? Cotter! Welcome, welcome back. back. I don't know the rest of it. Y'all, welcome to the Real Talk Kim podcast. I am so excited you're here. We are back with the beautiful Francie Chapman. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. So here's what I'm doing, y'all. So I do a retreat every uh, six months. And uh, usually it is mostly for my RTK inner circle because I felt that God, uh, when God began to really expo- expose me and expand my territory, it was hard for me to touch people. And I actually really love people. Like, loving people is my favorite hobby on the planet. And I was finding myself feeling detached. And so I was like, God, what can I do? He said, start an inner circle. And I was like, what is an inner circle? And it was crazy because I started the inner circle a month before the pandemic hit. And who knew? Like, I wanted to start an inner circle so bad for like three years. And he was like, girl, you still ratchet. You will lead them straight to hell. (laughs) I need you to get yourself together, okay? And so I I started working on me, and three years later, he let me start an inner circle. So I do a lot of my stuff is geared toward my inner circle people, my master classes. And this one, God said, open it up to everybody. And I'm so glad I did. This day, it's a Thursday that we're recording this. Okay, and let me tell you, it's 111 today. The, the first day, so I've been praying this over everybody, <laughs> the first day of the retreat is 111, God's thousand-fold blessing. What? So I've been calling that down on everybody, everybody. I better stop grabbing it. Down. Yes. So the first day of this retreat is God's thousand-fold oh, blessing. my God. So, so, so I don't think y'all are excited. Because now when y'all are watching this, it's not 111, but you could still claim the blessing. Yes, right. You could still That's claim right. that prophetic word. Y'all yes. listen to me. A prophetic word is when, even if somebody's given a prophetic word to somebody else, you can claim it. Yes. You can claim that prophetic word. And so I'm glad you're here. We're about to get into it. I'm super excited. I get more hyper as the time goes by. <laughs> um, it is about 2.26. So I don't know what time it is right now, but I can just guess. It's 12. 12. See, I just threw that number out there. That's prophetic too. 2.46. <laughs> Anyway, I want y'all to do me a favor right now. Wherever you're watching this from, I want you to go subscribe. You see that little button right there? If you're watching on my Real Talk Kim YouTube channel, or you're listening to it on Spotify, or Potbean, or iHeartRadio, or Apple, or wherever you're watching it, subscribe. And then do me another favor. Go share this. Share this with somebody. Because that is your evangelistical tool. Literally, when you share, y'all don't know when you share something, it's like all of a sudden it shows up in a newsfeed and God can use it, right? God can use it and he can use what that person is saying to touch that person. You may not even know they're trying to commit suicide and then all of a sudden they're free. And so go share, get your popcorn, go to the bathroom and we're about to chop it up with Miss Francie. We'll be right back. And welcome back. I am so excited that you're with us today. Excited is my word all the time. Like even before I start, Francie, I'm like, don't say excited. That's what all preachers say. I'm so excited. But I'm excited to have you today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. (laughs) You are a gift. God has done that for me too. You're a gift. Oh, thank you. So So they need to go back and watch. Am I? Yes. Ah! Girl, oh, I'm, I got my earbuds on at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm like, come Francie, on, girl. Francie, that blesses me. It. Yes. That I blesses me. There. Y'all know what's so crazy is I didn't even think to have Francie on my podcast. She just said, I'm coming. I was like, ah, you're going to be in the room? 
But we definitely got to put you on a podcast. (laughs) One ounce of obedience will do more for you than all the prayer in the world. That's right. And it doesn't matter where where you are. Uh, I fully believe that we are God's molding and changing and growing us until the day we go home. And we need to be surrounding ourselves with people that are lifting us up. And you know who your people are and teaching us and pushing us to grow. And the days that I wake up and go, oh my gosh, if I, one more fire to put out, one more person, one more call from the manager of this and that and all these bad things that are being talked about. And Kim's (laughs) about to come on and tell me, girl, you better get up. I'm like, yes, I'm getting up. So, yes, we all need to be doing that. I don't care who you are, where you come from, how long. I didn't grow up in church. My adoptive parents were Jewish. And I didn't. God chased me down in the middle of my second married my mother's lover marriage. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That would be a book. Good book title. Oh, yes, it would. Married my mother's lover. (laughs) Like, I would listen. I would read it. Because we like yeah. Juicy. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And always when you see a, a, a book title like that, you know there's going to be a good end. Yeah. So let's recap just a minute because there's a okay. lot of people catching this podcast that didn't hear the last podcast. You need to go back and listen to it because it's well worth the time. Um, but we were talking about how you've been married four times. Don't you know what? It's so funny because people always do that to me too. Yeah. How many times have you been married? They don't do that to me. <laughs> they tell me. How many times I've been married? Oh, <laughs> and I'll be oh, like, yes. Um, I, I can't even tell you how many articles there are of Fran, which my, before I married dog, my name's Francie Frain. Um, Francie Frain, sixth wife of dog. So yeah. how many articles there are? You know that. what? People never bother to tell the story. No. Like you always see people putting up clips, but they never tell the story. Like they'll j- just get a one clip and then they'll go off that one clip. Oh, gosh. They don't know that. Welcome to my life. Yes. They don't know yes. that, that we uh, were looking for love in the wrong place. They, they, mm-hmm. they didn't know that I had never preached a sermon ever when I married my last husband. I never dreamed I was going to preach. I never exactly. dreamed. He was my financial plan. You know, I was like, <laughs> he going to get me out of my mama's That's house. That's right. He going to get me out of my mama's house. Like, they just didn't know. They just look at me today and think that I made those stupid decisions today. So people don't, they, how do you handle that? This is a great place to start because I think a lot of us don't become great because we're afraid of what people are going to say when they go Google us. Right? 100%. How do you handle that? Because you're human. Yes. Uh, look, I'm not going to tell you that, especially at the beginning when, you know, we come out of COVID and I heard you say that one day that God, God did COVID for you. I'm like, nah, (laughs) no, no, no. God did COVID for me because I spent all that time getting to know dog when the whole world was shut down. And then I was getting ready. I was knowing me. I was learning me. Me too. Me and Kingston. And then we go, we go to the airport for the first time and things were just starting to open so up. So y'all got married. She's married to Dog the Bounty Hunter, y'all, for all of y'all we, that we didn't we tell you. We got engaged during COVID. Okay. And we got then we got married after in okay. September of 21. Okay. So How long did y'all date? A year. Okay. Longer. Yeah. It was longer. Okay. And so then we go to the airport when things start to open up. And it's the first. I've never done an interview I've never had people asking me questions. And so this is how much God loves me because COVID. And so my first interview was over the phone because everything shut down. I'm like, all right, I got this. I can do this. Come on. I'm good. I'm good. Then it, then it's, then Zoom starts, right? Yeah. And so then there's this other little interview on Zoom. I'm like, all right, I'm good. I'm good. I'm holding on to the chair and I got my nails digging into dog's leg. And, and he, he, oh my gosh, he is so amazing because in all the crying that I did, I don't fit in your world. I can't do this. I need to go back to Elizabeth. 
and um, all of that. And he's, you were made for this. You were born for this. God knew that we were going to be together right at this very moment. That's all he kept speaking into me at the very beginning. Man. And so then we go to the airport when things really open up and there's people everywhere. They want pictures. And there's these women with half dressed in the airport hanging all over my man. And I'm like, honey, I made love Jesus, but I'll come after a bee. I'm still hood. So let me just say that. You better get your hands off my man. <laughs> and so uh, I come from the hood in Miami. <laughs> so come on, girl. Straight G. Ain't no, you better get your hands off my man. <laughs> So I got my Jesus bracelet on, but uh-uh. She'll rip it off in a heartbeat. <laughs> what uh, would Jesus do? I don't know. That's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, See these nails? I will dig them into your throat. <laughs> how did you handle that? It was hard at first. And so there's this park that was down the street from his house and... I, I, would ball, I would put the worship music on and proceed to tell God how he lost his ever-loving mind, thinking that where he was putting me, and I would bawl my eyes out. And I love people. So it wasn't about that. It was the magnitude of his fame that I had no idea about. Does he still get stopped whole, everywhere? Girlfriend, <clears throat> we cannot stop in the airport. We have a game plan. Do y'all take security? Not always, because we love I people. I bet they would be scared to death of him anyway. We love people, and we pray for people everywhere. Yeah. And so God told us no. So only when we go to big events. I'm glad you it, don't. And it gets crazy, do we do that? And so, you know, I'm bawling my eyes out on the way to this park, crying, and proceeding to tell God how he's made a huge mistake. Were you listening to Oceans? <laughs> No. <laughs> Oceans is a song everybody plays yeah. while they're complaining to God. <laughs> I I know. I don't think it was. It was probably oh. get up out of that grave. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Get up out of that grave. Uh, 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 uh. Get up out of that grave. <laughs> <laughs> so about I had done that three times three separate times and I'm on my way to the park and I'm doing this and I am just having an all out meltdown about how hard this is and all these threats and people are talking so horrible to me. I, I, ha I am full well aware that I will never be Beth Chapman and I don't want to be. No. She was a powerful, strong woman in her own right, and she changed lots of lives, and she helped. She walked alongside a side dog through all those years of living through TV, trying to deal with all them kids he's got, and there's like, you know, a, a, ba a baseball team of kids, and so... Um, she ah. held her own, and, and she was her in her own right. I'm not trying to be her. I don't want to be her. So this is a great place to uh, talk to that woman that has come into a life of a man that has kids, and she's feeling maybe the mother-in-law is still trying to compare her to a Beth. Right. Or the kids the are friends. still, or the friends. All the family. How, what do you tell that woman? Like when you said, I, I do, you became his wife. Yes. So how do you stay focused? I'm going to keep going back to this same statement. You have to get your soul healed. You have to know. But what does that look like? That means all your stuff, all the layers of trauma, all the abuse you went through, all the people that hurt you, all the church that hurt you, your family that's been telling you your whole life you're never going to be anything, all, that, all those layers, all the stupid things that we do out of our wounded soul and out of our pain, half of us do it to ourselves. And you've got to deal with all that. 
And no matter how bad it hurts, no matter, there are days that I crawled through the rocks, threw up in my own living room, getting delivered, and sweating, crying. So you had to throw up when you got delivered? Yeah. A couple times. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, I'd open the door to lots of demonic stuff being all those years in the drug days, dealing coke. So talk of that. Talk and to that. So, talk to that deliverance look. Because there's some people that you've opened a lot of doors. Get and, with somebody that don't just let anybody yeah. be the one. You need to get with somebody that is trustworthy and knows what they're talking about, knows what they're doing, and work with them. And it, I, ladies, I'm not going to tell you that it's not hard. It is probably one Shoot. of the hardest things that you <laughs> will ever do. But let me tell you, on the other side... It's so worth it. ...is us. Yes. On the other side of that healing is, uh, is us. God didn't take us from that broken girl not believing that she'd ever be used by God and elevate us to, to where we are now. We had to work for it. We had to chase after it. Yeah. You have to chase after it. Get your soul healed. You have to get right in your mind. That's the thing that I love about was... you so much is our stinking thinking and the devil telling us who we are. Oh. You have to know who you yes. are in him. I'm talking, look in that mirror, love your big old thick thighs, love everything about you. Tell yourself every day that you are made in the image of God. Yes. I do that every day. You know, I remember, I Francie, I remember I was probably two years into um, my 18 year marriage divorce. Two years living with my mom and daddy. And I'm laying in bed one night and this lady at my job, her name was, how come I can't remember her name? <laughs> what was her name, it's Mimi? insignificant. Yeah, it is insignificant. But I would, you know, you know me, I want to know. I'm going to tell y'all, she's not even alive anymore. She, oh, she was such a gift from God to my life because this woman told me every day, I got a guy that you need to go sit down with. His name is E.O. And he is going to deliver you. And I'm thinking, I don't need no deliverance. Like, I got this. Like, I, I man, I am so far from who I used to be. She goes, oh, but I think you still have some residue. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like... I got some residue. Uh, what is residue? Uh, she says, you know how when you walk out and you come back smelling like a smokestack, you go hide behind the building and anything you got to do to to do in secret, you know it's a sin. And I'm thinking, but that ain't going to send me to hell. She says, but it's controlling you. And she said, nothing can control you if you're healed. That's right. And so one day I went and I saw this man with her name E.O. And all, I laid in my bed that night like nervous wreck because all I kept thinking was this man. I remember his name. His name was E.O. And I was like, this man, I said, God, listen to me. Am I going to be sitting here? I was so afraid that I was going to be like puking stuff. I was afraid that I was going to be... Uh, on the floor, and I was just like, God, don't take my dignity. Like, okay. And then I heard the Lord say this, how bad do you want it? Like, I am a good, good father, right. and I'm a graceful father, and I am not going to intimidate you or, 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 or make you feel stupid, but walk into that room, and God, whatever you got to do to set me free. And that lady named Julie walked in. I remember her name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. She walked in that room with me, y'all. When I tell you, for four hours. It was the most gentle, Francie. Mm -hmm. It was the most gentle deliverance. So awesome. He would just sit there and talk <laughs> softly with me. And y'all, I even felt, because back then I was sneaking cigarettes. Like I was that love spell girl. Like I would walk up in church to lead worship and I'd be smelling like a whole <laughs> brothel. Because I would be spraying love spell. Y'all remember love spell? <laughs> And I was thinking, nobody knows nobody that I'm knows. smoking in my car on the way to church. <laughs> that day, hey, baby, that day, it was like God completely set me free. I'm talking, I kept going back to my ex. 
I mean, I would, I would, I would be like wishy-washy with him. Eight times I took him back, trifling. No more was gonna get himself together than the man in the moon. And during this mo- during this deliverance session, it was like all of that left me. And literally the next time I saw this brother, <laughs> I was like, I don't even remember you naked. It was like God had healed me in such a way that 18 years of seeing this dude naked, I didn't even remember him naked no more. It was like I wasn't angry. Praise the Lord. That's the, right? He was fine. He was like my sons. He he was fine, fine. But I couldn't remember it. And I wasn't stuck on him anymore. And sometimes you don't need therapy. Therapy's great. But if you are still going to therapy and you're still stuck after four or five years or even a year. Time to make even a, a year. Yeah. Time You're to still stuck even after a year. That is you, boo. Yes. And healing from the Father comes from you finally letting it go. And sometimes That's you need right. some sozo. Mm-hmm. You need somebody to walk you through letting it sometimes, go. Sometimes the deep, hard stuff. Yeah. You, it, we don't want to go there. And so it's hard for us. Sometimes we just need somebody to walk alongside us to draw those things out, to pull yeah. pull out what, what God wants to heal. And so we just need somebody, but we don't always need, you know, to keep running back to that therapist and, you know, I can't live without them and all that. God wants to heal you. You have to be willing. And yes, it's hard to go back to those places that we're trying to shove down. Yeah. We just keep trying to shove it down. Let it come up. God's not going to rip the Band-Aid off. He's, he's going to peel it back in layers. When, he, when you're ready, he's going to continue to take you deeper. And Francie, there's no guideline. No, there's not. Except the Bible. And the Bible is full of promises that he'll never leave you and never forsake you. you Psalms 40. Be- it, we have to believe it. Yes. First. That's our part. We have to believe it. If we don't believe what he's telling us, we're never going to get healed. Yeah. We're never going to go to the places that he wants to take us if we don't believe what he's saying about us. Man, that's why I'm always telling you guys this, man. I'm going to give you oil. I'm going to keep telling y'all, don't you go home without your oil. Because when you realize the power Mm -hmm. that you possess, God's healing is instantaneously. I mean, it's not a, like, it's not a, some of y'all are like, girl, I still can't get over my mom. I'm grieving my mom. Everyone's healing's different. It is different. But at some point, it all's the same. It is a choice. You hear it me? It is a choice. It is a choice. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you will have a oh, hell no moment where you send that devil back to hell where he belongs. And exactly. when that happens, you're no longer bothered. Yes. Isn't that yes. good? Yes. On my third trip to that park, we got swarmed at the airport by people wanting pictures of dog. And we got back from that trip and I just was so stressed out. How am I going to do this? How am I going to handle this? And it was my third trip in in the car, bawling my eyes out with these questions to God. What are you doing to me? After all... The, the two years of healing. I've been on my face for two years getting my soul healed. And this is where you took me. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're doing to me. <laughs> Ladies, I get, I get to the park and the Holy Spirit drops in my truck. And God says to me, oh, <laughs> I let my son step down off his throne and come into the world to save it. And now I'm asking you to do what I'm asking you to do to help me get it healed. So are you going to do that or not? (laughs) I got out of that truck. I laid in the rocks in that parking lot begging for forgiveness and told God, I will never do this again. And every single person that you bring to us, wherever we are, I know that they're sent from you. And it changed everything for me. It changed my whole perspective of what what I'm doing in dog's life. Come on. What my call is, the people that he's bringing to us. We pray for people in gas station parking lots. Oh, yeah, me too, girl. I will drop it. In Walmart parking lot. It doesn't matter. 
It do, inside grocery stores, dog went to go pick something up at Walgreens and I came in to get him and he's in the back of the store praying over oh, yeah. a lady that was um, struggling with alcoholism. Oh yeah. Because it's personal. Yes. When you've made it through some things and God brought you up, laying in your bed, three o'clock in the morning, losing your ever-loving mind, when you get yourself back together, and you will. You will. You will. You can hang around with me or not. You can't even know who Jesus is. That's you can right. be listening to these powerful speakers that went from the pit to the palace. They did not rot in the rut. They got up. And when you get yes. up, man, you tell your story differently. Exactly. Man, I'm so excited you with me. You know we got to go to a break. Yes. I get all fired up because I'm looking in this room and all I'm seeing is legends, legends, destiny changers, world yes. changers, trailblazers. I get excited, baby. We'll be right back. Welcome back, y'all. This has been, this whole month has been so hard to take breaks because if you're in this room, there is the power of God in this room. We've got a whole bunch of trailblazers sitting in front of us, boss chicks, world changers, yes. men of God, people that took a licking and kept on ticking. And when you get all that juice up in one room, man, it's like fire. <laughs> Powerful. It's like fire. Yes. And so when we went to break, you were saying something that was so incredible. Do you have kids? I have two boys. And how are they? They're good. Yeah. They're still in Colorado. Okay. So we're in Florida now. So did they remember you when you were crazy? Ooh, girl. <laughs> Come on. I really want you to talk about that for a second. I feel yeah. like God just dropped that in my spirit. Because if it, it, I walked through that with my sons where I was, they watched me. I mean, my son on Preachers of Atlanta said, all I remember as a baby was my lullabies was you and daddy screaming. And I lived under that shame for so long because I didn't get it together quick enough. How yeah. do you handle I that? I parented out of guilt. Oh, me too. For a long, long time. And they would bring up that. stuff? I did it to myself. Yeah. I did it to myself. And, you know, I didn't just do it once. I did it twice. And I took them from the fire to the frying pan. Yeah. And, you know, we leave Florida to get out. And then we're right back into this other one. And then because of how I see myself, I stay way too long. And because you're a fixer and I'm scared. Yeah. And, you know, I can deal with what this is more than I can being alone and raising these boys by myself because I feel like I've screwed them up so much already by myself. <sighs> Golly. And so I keep staying and, you know, they've walked through some stuff. This is why it's so important, Francie, that especially when we have babies, like we got women now that are, have their kids calling a de different daddy every other day. And yeah. this is why it's so important that the mate is so vital that we just don't jump into relationships. Now, granted, we have because we were broken, but you and I are sitting up on this platform showing that even if you messed up, your kids can still the, see the fruit of today. Yes. So my oldest son is 36. And I have one grandson, he's 11. And so uh, to hear my 11 year old grandson, he, he comes to every break, we bring him to oh. wherever we are. And so uh, he's telling me this story about how his friends in, in school are talking about how their grandmothers are just, you know, come babysit them and hang out and all this stuff. And he's telling him, oh, my grandma's married to Dog the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> and she's traveling all over the world, changing people's lives. And, and she's chasing after Jesus every day of her life. Oh. And so it just makes me cry because... Grandbabies yeah. are kind of God's way of letting us do yeah. do-overs. Yes. <laughs> and Dog and I did a tent 
meeting yeah. in Modesto, California. It was awesome with this with Christian Motorcycle Club. And it was off the rail. Oh my gosh, it was so amazing. And my son called me crying. <laughs> and he said, I am off the charts. So proud of you. Ooh. I just Whew. let my whole men's group, Whew. I just shared your preach with my whole men's group. And they were blown away. And I just want you to know how proud I am of you. And so it changes everything. It does. It changes everything. And so you can't, you can't live your life beating yourselves up. Because the fact of the matter is, y'all, it's hard being a mom. Yeah. It's really hard walking through devastations and different seasons. And you don't have the luxury to grieve. And you got to hold it together. And they getting to move on. The husband's getting, you know, the ex, whatever. And you're over here holding the pieces. And yeah. me and her both are proof that it's never too late for your fruit to outlive your past. That's right. And it's a beautiful thing. My son, that's my boy walking around. My son literally and my, my oldest son both work in ministry with me now. And... They, re they remember the lullabies, screaming and hollering, mm -hmm. but they also get to watch the healthy Kim. And they're proud of their mama too. Yes. I, I love are. that. I'm sure they are. Yeah. So y'all, yes, Now you're ahead. stepping into this amazing relationship with this amazing man. <laughs> I'm getting married. And you're getting married. And uh, even, you know, even when I first married Dog and... I'm thinking that, you know, I'm going to walk alongside him and I'm going to be there for him and all those things. And then he comes to me and said, oh, no, God told me that part of my job as your husband is to build you a platform. That's my up, platform man. is to become part of your platform and girls he did not let me hide behind him. He shoved <laughs> me right out there. I can't even tell I you. I do. I oh, love y'all's relationship. Gosh. I love it. He's like, no, it is not all about me. And I, God has a plan for your life. And that's, that's part of why you're with me. Yeah. And so you get out there. And he yeah. just shoved me right out there. And all the times that I first felt like, oh, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> now she's a boss. There. And like when you walk out on the platform, it's so funny when I'm watching you. I'm like, get it, <laughs> get it. Cause you're just like, whoo, whoo, whoo. You're like a ninja. So uh, and I, I have love this it. woman that sh I first met her when I was at Katie's. Her name is Clarice Fluitt, and she's from Louisiana. And she is like this Southern <laughs> boss mama, powerful. She prophesied over Dog and I when we first met her and just laid us out. Man. And she said to me before she left that day, God is elevating you and he's going to put you in rooms and put you on platforms that you never dreamed you would ever be on. And don't you let him see you sweat. <laughs> And so yes. every time I walk out there, when my hands are Me still too, shaking girl. and I'm just like, okay, Lord, you better do this because you're going to look funny if I don't do good. And I think, this I is think a, about her. Don't uh, let him see you sweat. I think this is a great way to end this today. You get nervous still. Yes. Me too. Yes. Don't let him see you sweat. Don't let them see you. That is sweat. the way you we're just ending this. Bring it. Don't let them see you sweat. I, yes. yo, I'm telling you, I've gone back to platforms that I, I literally, y'all know my story. Pastor Rod Parsley, I walked out of his ministry, and he was like, "You can't marry him." And I was like, "Bye." And 28 years later, I'm preaching Dominion Camp Meeting on the very platform that I used to be shaking in my heels walking out there scared to death. Yeah. And there's so many times, y'all, I don't even remember what I said. Me too. I, I honestly, it is like, God, you got to take the wheel. Mm -hmm. And so you're still going to be scared. This is a word yes. for y'all. You're going to be scared to death. Your knees are going to be knocking. People are going to be reaching out to you. And you're going to be like, ah! 
because you watch. The, God is enlarging your territory. Expanding he just needs your, your yes. tent pegs. Yep. And you, he needs your yes. Yep. I love it. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. I love you guys. Y'all, thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure you're subscribing to my channel. Make sure you're sharing this with somebody. Me and Francie Chapman <laughs> love you so much. Love you so much. And y'all, thank you for being so amazing and supporting me like you do. I love you. And stay tuned because next week we've got a big surprise. <laughs> Thank you for, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, and absolutely. I love you. I love you. Thank you for having me. And I appreciate you so And I'm so, much. so excited about the new master class because I'm taking it too. Ah! Yes. Soar in 24 is about yeah. to kick our butts from the yes. pit to the palace. Come on. I feel it. Shaking the gates of hell, baby. Yes. Uh, I love you guys. And next retreat, you better be here because... You don't know what you're missing. I love y'all. See y'all next week. Yay, networks.